Number 25. Convert the values of Kc to values of Kp, or the values of Kp to values of Kc. And then we have this balanced equation over here with the respective Kp value. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit bigger just so that we can work with it. So I have Na2SO4 dot 10H2O, so this is all a hydrate, and it's a solid, but this comes to equilibrium with Na2SO4, which is also a solid, plus 10H2O, and that's a gas. Okay, so in this case, since they did give me a, what happened there? Hold on, there we go. So since they did give me a Kp value, all I have to do is I just have to take that Kp value and convert it into a Kc value, right? Okay, well, there's only one formula that has both of these values in it, so you guys should memorize it. It's this formula right here, which I will put over here We'll talk about it a little bit, and then we'll do the math over here. So Kp equals Kc times Rt raised to delta n gas. Now let's see. We can either manipulate this equation to get Kc and then plug it in, or we could just use this formula, plug it in with the numbers, you know, and do the math. It really just depends on what your preference is. Um, if you want, if you want to isolate Kc, all we would have to do is divide by this Rt delta N gas on both sides, right? You see how that whole thing would cancel, and you do that. But for, for me, I think it's just easier, but, you know, to each his own. I'm just going to memorize the same formula, plug in the numbers, and then just solve the math. So in this case, they gave me a Kp value, 4.08 times 10 to the negative 25, cool, and we're solving for the Kc, so I could maybe label this as x, right? You could label it as Kc, doesn't matter. But now I need to know what Rt and the delta n gas is. Well, R is a constant value, and since we're talking about pressures and gases, we're going to use the R value of 0 0.0821. We are not going to use the 8.314 because we're not talking about energy. That number goes with energy. This number goes with pressures. T stands for temperature, but you got to have it in Kelvin. So here we go, guys. They gave you a Celsius temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. So how do I go from a Celsius to a Kelvin? Well, I just add 273, right? So 25 plus 273 is 298. So now I have 298 Kelvin. And that's the number that's going to go here, 298. Now here comes something new. I'm going to raise the R times T to the delta N gas. What is that? Well, any time that we have a delta, right, that means a change. So it has to be something minus something else. And in this case, we're talking about N's. Keep in mind that N's are moles. And specifically, we only care about the gases. So it's basically the number of gas moles that you have of the products minus the gas moles of the reactants. But we only care about gases. So go through those states. Now here, I have a solid. Do I care about this guy? No. So I am not even looking at this. Goodbye, this whole thing goes away because it's a solid and not a gas. The same thing here, this is a solid. Do I care about the sodium sulfate? Absolutely not, get rid of it. Here I finally have a gas, so I can take those amount of moles. Now it's products minus reactants. So how many moles of the H2O do I have? I just use the coefficients. I see that I have a 10 here, so I have a total of 10 moles of product, and I don't have any moles of gas on my left side, right, because I don't even have a gas here, so it would be zero for the, um, the reactant side. So total number of uh, products would be 10. For the reactants, it's zero. You just subtract them. So my delta N in this case would be 10. 
Now I have all the numbers, so let's just write it out. KP, oh, actually, we have a number here, right? So we got 4.08 times 10 to the negative 25 equals, we're solving for x, right? That's the KC. And now I'm going to times the 0 0.0821 times the 298 and raise that all to a 10. So this we're going to be doing first, right? Remember, parentheses comes before exponents. So 4.08 times 10 to the negative 25th equals x times whatever that is. 24, you can round, 24.4658. I'm just going to keep it, you know, as consistent as I can. This is raised to the 10th. Whoa, okay, now we're getting crazy numbers here. So we got 4.08 times 10 to the negative 25th. This equals the x value. And now, since I raised it to the 10th, I now get 7.684 times 10 to the 13th. Solve for x, I'm just going to divide by 7.684 times 10 to the 13th on both sides, 7.684 times 10 to the 13th, cancel that out, and now I have my x value, which remember was my kc value, right? So whatever that is, uh, yeah, we'll just say kc, right? So let's see, 4.08 times 10 to the negative 25th divided by this big number, Whoa, even a smaller number, 5.3, and technically should be three sig figs, so maybe 3, 1 times 10 to the negative 39, and we are done. That's it. Look at that, guys. A little bit of math. Perfect. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video, and just remember, you know, to use this formula, and that's it, all right? Um... Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.